Welcome everyone to town hall number 136. I'm Maureen Murphy from HR and this is Melissa Miller from Recruiting and Nicole from Marketing. Today we want to share insights from women of SMA. National Women's History Month is an annual observance in the United States that takes place during the month of March. The celebration began as Women's History Week, which was first observed in 1981. The idea was proposed by the National Women's History Project an organization dedicated to promoting women's history and raising awareness about the contributions of women throughout history. The first Women's History Week was observed in March of 1982, and it was celebrated in schools, libraries, and community centers across the country. This week was chosen to coincide with International Women's Day, which is observed on March 8th. In 1987, Congress passed a resolution designating the month of March as National Women's History Month. This resolution was signed into law by President Ronald Reagan. Since then, every U.S. president has proclaimed March as National Women's History Month. Today, National Women's History Month is celebrated not only in the United States, but also in countries around the world. The observance is an opportunity to recognize the achievements of women throughout history and to promote gender equality and women's empowerment. The theme of National Women's History Month changes every year. The themes are chosen to highlight the diverse and often overlooked accomplishments of women throughout history. Some of the past themes have included women's education, women's empowerment, weaving the story of women's lives, and honoring trailblazing women in labor and business. This year's theme is share our stories. After Art Talks, we will do just that and share our stories. As we turn the camera over to Sarah, I just have to say that I already saw the art talk on our very own Patricia Ventura, and it is amazing. Patricia, you are so exceptionally talented. Let's turn over to Sarah for more insights into this amazing artist. Hello, Sarah. Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to art talk number 136. This obviously, as uh, Nicole was mentioning, is an extremely special artist today because we're focusing on SMA's Patricia Ventura. Okay, here we go. So Patricia um, Ventura lives and works in Mexico City. Let me just wait for this to load. There we go. Uh, Patricia Ventura works and lives in Mexico City. Um, she studied graphic design at the Universidad de las Americas Cholula Puebla. And she has worked in various design areas as a freelancer and maker, but started training in the art of pottery at Escuela de Artesanas Instituto Nacional de Bellas Artes in 2009. Her ceramics workshop was set up three years later at her home, a 1940s house, and her pieces have been selected in various international venues that we'll look at. Uh, she has an editorial design postgraduate degree that has led her to work uh, creating books since 2010. She joined SMA as an associate in 2021 and ever since has collaborated with SMA to materialize their knowledge into a collection of books. During the last 12 years, she's focused her activities on designing ceramics in small batches. She formulates her mediums and glazes from scratch using raw materials such as silica, different clays, and feldspar. She utilizes antique techniques such as cobalt tints, terra sigliata, which is clay with mineral pigments, burnished clay, and the ancestral art of raku firing. Here are some of the pieces she made while she was studying at Escuela de Artesanas Craft School that were featured during the yearly exhibitions of alumni. You can see the unique texture, almost coral-like with barnacles, uh, that she was able to achieve on some of these pieces. The Coon Necklace was featured in the famous Lark Craft 500 book series made with Egyptian paste beads, Fianza clay and handmade wool beads as well. So a lot of different textures going into one necklace. Tableware projects were her favorite when she set up her ceramic shop, Ceramics Lab Studio. And you can see actually more of her work on her Instagram account, which is at ceramics lab underscore MX. And you can see it on the screen here if you'd like to look at her Instagram afterwards. 
Um, these are the cloud plates, which are stackable, and they're inspired by the cumulus cloud shape. And these were actually presented during the International Contemporary Furniture Fair in New York at the Javits Center, alongside Milan-based studio Design Boom. The Nopali trays, inspired by the Apuntia or prickly pear cactus, were presented during the Tokyo Designers Week, again with the Milan-based studio Design Boom as well. And these obviously have a variety of uses. You can use them to put your keys or spare change, or you can just use them as decoration in your home. Artichoke Vessel, Mortar and Pestle Trio, and Origins Plate were all featured at the International Biennale of Utilitarian Ceramics in Mexico City's Franz Mayer Museum on three different occasions. The Franz Mayer Museum opened in 1986 and is a privately owned museum in a historic house that highlights Latin America's largest collection of decorative arts. And you can see the variety of pieces that she does between the three of these you've got the artichoke, which is very detailed and specific, a mortar and pestle, which can be, um, you know, actually utilized uh, in the kitchen. And then you have a decorative plate as well. Here's a collection of stoneware and white matte glaze called Home Laundry, uh, inspired by a laundry line. This collection was actually selected for the Feminist Sex Shop show at on the ground floor gallery in Los Angeles in 2014. Uh, the gallery is an alternative art space in South LA that seeks to promote emerging artists who promote sex positive feminism. Mocajete and Teolote is a stoneware reinterpretation of the traditional version of the mortar and pestle, usually made with volcanic stone. Uh, this piece was selected for the 12th International Biennale of Ceramics in the city of Manises, Spain in 2015. And here Celadon Seams is a collection of porcelain cups that are actually made from soft molds. The molds are made of cotton. Um, and these pieces were selected for the 13th International Biennale of Ceramics, also in Manises. Nipple vessels were made in 2021. And Patricia said, quote, she got inspired by the female energy that emanates from the nipple as a symbol of primal nursing, while the shape of the vessels is inspired by the silhouette of the female torso and belly. This work is currently participating in the open call by the 16th Biennale of Artistic Ceramics in Portugal. And I've also been told to shout out Paul Trees, who has been a fan of this piece. Patricia experiments with different construction techniques such as wheel throwing, hand building, and the use of various temperature ranges in her work, um, visually and textually unique and stunning. And I will end with this quote of hers. She says, I create stories with clay from my experience and get my inspiration from themes such as women's rights, gender equality, and Mexico's cultural manifestations. Thanks everyone. And thank you to Patricia for letting us showcase your amazing art. Thank you so much, Sarah. What amazing ceramics, Patricia. The themes of women's rights, gender equality, and culture fit right into Women's History Month. Before we get started on our main story today, time to give a shout out to Sarah. Please join me in singing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sarah. Happy birthday to you. Watch for something in the mail, Sarah. Thanks and see you next week. Thank now you. Now on to our featured session, National Women's History Month and the theme of why do we want to share stories? Overall, sharing stories is a fundamental part of human communication and helps us connect with others, make sense of the world, preserve our cultural heritage, inspire and motivate and entertain ourselves and others. So let's start with our stories. However, we had a tricky decision. Do we keep the stories anonymous? So I asked Alexa and she said it may be important for stories to be shared with attribution, especially if the purpose is to highlight the achievements, experience or perspectives of a particular individual or community. 
Attribution can also help to build trust and credibility with the audience as it allows them to verify the authenticity of the story and the identity of the storyteller. So we compromised, only first names. And now our first story from our producer, Liz. My story, my advice, a degree in theater. Lifelong learning is critical for women and everyone. Here is a fabulous story from Susanna. Over to Susanna. About five years into my time at SMA, we had our first global town hall. Dr. Bernie Jarowski did a presentation about the book Managing Oneself by Peter F. Drucker. I was very enthralled by the presentation and AJ was kind enough to give me a copy of the book to read. I became fascinated with the Drucker philosophy and enrolled at Drucker Management School at Claremont Graduate University. Thank you to SMA for the inspiring presentations, the opportunity to learn, and giving support to their employees. That presentation was truly life-changing for me. Inspiration comes from the most unique sources. Good luck, Susanna. Well, I want to read my story. I have learned that being nice to others, showing interest in others' work, or asking if someone needs help goes a long way. Whether it's a smile, a random act of kindness, saying good job, asking how one's weekend was, or asking if someone needs help can be so impactful on the person. In return, they will be willing to help you and be there for you. For example, I reached out to an associate to interview them for an SMA associate spotlight and learn more about their career. At first, they were hesitant because they didn't think they had anything of importance to share, but they had the most interesting story. They were so grateful that I wanted to learn more and showed interest because they didn't think they were worthy. They even sent me flowers as a thank you. Little did I know they would become an email pal or a friend of mine within the company. With COVID, we've all been reminded about the power of kindness. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go ahead and share my story. Uh, when I was in my early 20s, I decided to move from Arizona to California without a job or a career in mind. I worked a couple of odd jobs and signed up with a temp agency. SMA was my first temp assignment working as the receptionist. Well, that was in 1999 and I've been here ever since. I've held several titles from receptionist to executive assistant, office manager, and most recently the recruiting portal project manager. SMA has allowed me to evolve and given me the opportunity to grow and it's been just great. Yeah, that shows the importance of taking risks. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Let's bring Jenny in and hear her story. Hello, Jenny. Hi, everybody. I've been in the workforce since uh, 15 years old. I've had many roles and worked closely with people in a lot of different situations. Starting in customer service role taught me how important it is to know how to communicate with people at every level of the workforce. This is something that has benefited me in my career and continues to do so. And here's my story. When I graduated from college, I wanted to be a teacher. That entailed an additional year of college to get my teaching credential. So I traveled throughout Europe with my Let's Go Europe book, my backpack, and my friends. And when I returned home, I started working as a temp for a staffing agency. I opted to do this until I figured out where I wanted to go to get my credential. As I was working at various companies doing entry-level office work, I got to see how businesses worked and all the different departments and jobs that were available that I really had no knowledge of. I ended up at SMA as a temp receptionist and 30 years later, I can say that I've had quite the rewarding career. Now let's show you a video story from our tech director, Lexi, with her community service at Work for Chalk for the Children's Hospital of Orange County. Hey everyone, it's Lexi. I'm about to take you on a day with me at my internship in Seacrest Studios at Chalk. I just parked in the overflow parking and now we're heading into the building. So here is the entrance to the building that I go into every day. So one of the first things I do is head on up to the studio on the second floor. Alright everyone, here I am in the studio. We use a lot of equipment in here such as our soundboards and the TriCaster for the video which actually programs our video to go out to all of the rooms in the hospital on their TV in the patient rooms 
has fun things like how to draw go Grogu scheduled, and then we also do a bunch of live shows as well. Here you can see we can control the soundboards. Right now we only have the Spotify playing out to the stations that plays throughout the hospital, and we can turn it up and down depending on the levels to make sure it sounds great everywhere. Over here we have the TriCaster where we're able to create a bunch of cool images such as things we call MEs, which look something like that. And then what we could do is we can change the size of things to bigger or smaller, depending on what we're looking for, and change the background as well, because we do have a green screen here at Seacrest Studios. Right here is one of my favorite parts of the studio. We have Ryan Seacrest, a life-size cutout of the man himself who founded the studio. One of the best parts of the studio is that due to all the donations we get from all the donors, we have so many prizes we're able to give out for our shows or just to make a kid's day. On days like today, there isn't much going on in the studio, so I usually head up to the floors to see if any kids are interested in coming down to hang out with us or do a show of their own on all of their favorite interests. It's really up to them on what they want to do. They can come down and just play the drums or check out a camera, see what we do in the studio, or they could go on air live to the other patients' rooms and talk about one of their favorite things, trivia questions, show their favorite video, whatever they're interested in, just to make them feel included and get their mind off of their time here in the hospital. All right, guys, so I just got up to the fifth floor. I'm doing something we call promoing, where I'm gonna give them our weekly calendar for what Secret Studios is doing this week. And then there's a word search on the back where if they get all of them, they can win a prize, and all they have to do is call or text the studio. I also have my handy dandy camera and a handheld mic that they can talk into to say something they appreciate for a Valentine's Day video. And I also have a whole list of Valentine's Day jokes that they can say if they'd like for our Valentine's Day segment. So we'll have something themed for the day on February 14th. When they come down, they're able to sit right there in the host chair and use all of the boards that I showed you earlier, or they can sit here and use one of our mics to talk into the live audio board that goes out to all the stations. So this is Seacrest Studios' friend, Toast. Hey, Toast. Hello! Toast can show you some of the things that we love to do in the studio. have a huge selection of board games to play in the studio if they want to come down and just hang out make it a safe space for kids and they can play things like Jenga all right everyone so that concludes my day at chalk as a Secret Studios intern after going upstairs to go promo for some kids and try to film that Valentine's video I ended up uploading the Valentine's footage creating a Canva Valentine's Day card for the video when it's done and worked on the sticker that I've been creating for Seacrest Studios. Walking back to my car now, we'll come back another day to edit the video. Thanks so much for coming along with me on my day. Bye guys. Lexi, we are so proud of you. And here's another heartfelt story. I grew up as a military brat. My dad was a B-52 pilot in Vietnam and retired from the Air Force when I was in high school. After college, I married an Air Force officer and served as a military spouse for 20 years. My exposure to the military taught me independence and dedication to my country. I am still serving today by working at Corporate Gray to help transitioning military and veterans find employment. Being raised in an Air Force family and then raising two Air Force brats has been a privilege. I count my blessings every day for my family, friends, work, and country. This is so sweet, and that was from Karen. Thank you, Karen. Patty is out with clients, so I'm gonna tell her story. As a business development lead here at SMA, I have enjoyed helping people solve their problems. 
One day I was on the phone with my client discussing her company's needs when she began sharing with me about the challenges of her job and stories about her family. Later, she asked me to write her a recommendation letter. I felt honored that she would ask this of me. I wrote her a glowing letter, not only because she has a lot of great qualities, but also because we had developed a relationship that compelled me to meet her need. Eventually, she was promoted. One day, when a challenge arose with the project, she called me and we were able to resolve it quickly because she trusted that we would find a solution that would be in their best interest. It reminds me of how important it is to be there for people when they need you and how that develops trust in relationships, which in turn makes what I do fulfilling. Here's Sarah's story. Going to an all girls high school, I saw the value of surrounding myself with like-minded women. I also learned how to speak my mind and advocate for myself self in any workplace or classroom environment. I seek out female mentors and peers because I believe we have a shared experience and can grow when we support each other. And this one is from Patricia. Eight years ago, I started collaborating with a restaurant group in Mexico City, group of Mandarin House. I started as a graphic designer in marketing for four years in a row until I got pregnant. As a collaborator, I designed some of the group's restaurant's branding. I also designed new menu concepts hand in hand with chefs and the operations manager. One of the group's best-selling restaurants started to have specific photography needs. The chef said, if the customers don't see it on the menu, they'll probably never order it. So he asked for professional photos. The marketing area was new and we were only a team of three. And we also didn't have a big budget. I had some previous experience with product photography, and even when it was a bit scary because chefs do tend to be a little bossy, I took on the challenge of designing a new menu and producing new photos. Our team managed to transform low quality photos into high quality shots and professional looking dishes and beverages for monthly promotions. We also increased beverage sales by 20% at restaurants, as well as delivery sales specifically Uber, by 18%. What I learned during this time is that challenges may seem scary, but give you a great opportunity to raise the bar. Now let's switch over to Holly for her story. Hi everyone. I wanted to uh, share my experience with SMA. So I started with SMA as the receptionist as a temp job. Um, and after a few months of working the temp job, I was asked to go to the back of the house to help Steve Myers and his assistant, assistant with some uh, conferences that they were organizing. After working with them for a few years, I, or actually a few months, I was asked to um, become the invoicing manager for SMA. That was a challenge. I had never done invoicing before. And so I wanted to accept the challenge and challenge myself and my skills and learn a lot more. So I did that for a few years. And after that, um, I was given more and more responsibility with the accounting department and given accounts receivable, accounts payable, bank reconciliations, all of those things that come with the accounting department. Again, I was asked to streamline, try and help them streamline the invoicing and expense processes. And I took that challenge on. Um, and then finally ended up with, was asked to become the payroll manager for SMA. That was a scary challenge, a scary experience for me, but I took on that challenge and figured if I fail, that's okay, because I'll learn something from it, and it'll just make me stronger as a person, stronger as an employee for SMA, and I, that's my advice, just take on the challenges. It'll be worth it. This one is from an associate, Susan. In 1994, I traded business suits and high heels for khaki pants and sneakers. I had just purchased a nearly dead cafe and was determined to bring it back to life. I love to cook, I thought. It'll be fun. <laughs> Little did I know that operating a money-making breakfast and lunch restaurant was way harder than navigating corporate America. My first cook was a lovely woman from Chile. She had a tremendous work effort and a dazzling smile. 
She took pride in the food she made and the people soon began coming in and asking, what is Betsy making today? For the next four years, I made menus around what my staff loved to cook and bake and encouraged them to take credit when customers complimented the food they bought. The lesson has stayed with me since then. When people are able to create their own work and get recognition for it, the business grows and clients return again and again. And finally, here's a story from one of our BD leads, Heather. I'm all about stories. And in fact, I have a keychain that reminds me to live a great story. I like to think back on my career. I was five years into my career in proposal development and I wanted to get more involved and get to know others who knew the pressures and deadlines of proposal and business development. I asked my company to sponsor my APMP membership and send me to a training in Southern California. The theme was Network of Proposal Champions Best Practices for Winning. I could be in Orange County on that Friday for training and travel up to LA to see the public opening of the Space Shuttle Endeavor at the California Science Center. Endeavor's story has been a spectacular one, full of unforgettable moments from its construction in Downey and its assembly in Palmdale, its 25 missions to outer space, its 4,671 orbits around the planet Earth to Endeavor's iconic flight over California landmarks atop of a 747. Like many people who are watching the town hall today, I am a big NASA and space fan. The company couldn't fund me, so I paid for the trip myself, and it was the start of an unforgettable relationship. As of now, I am the chairwoman of the APMP Western chapter. To offer meaningful advice, be sure to take time away from proposals, invest in yourself, surround yourself with champions, and celebrate with your friends and colleagues your professional and personal victories. If you are looking for something different, go ahead and schedule that training, pursue that passion, and find moments that give you spectacular stories to share. That was from Heather, and we all want those keychains, Heather. <laughs>